Ida Nilsson, welcome back to Chamonix. Thanks for coming into the studio. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. How are you feeling coming into another UTMB week? You're going to be racing CCC on Friday morning. How's the, the body and mind feeling ahead of the, the race? No, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Like, yeah, uh, it's, um, yeah, I just had a, a longer race, but I feel like I uh, bounced back pretty quickly and I have been uh, feeling good like the, the last week. So, yeah. Geez. We've seen a lot of you this season. Obviously, you did Black Canyon in February, and then you did the Canyons 100K, which you won in April, which gave you a spot at Western States, which you did in June. How has recovery been after Western States? It was your first 100 miler. I'd love to hear what you learned from it and how your body's been able to recover. Yeah, the recovery had been pretty bad, actually really slow after. I I think, yeah, like two things, may, like I haven't done a hundred miler before and also I had really problem with my nutrition and the stomach. Like I think I got some kind of stomach bag the, the evening before. So it's like from the beginning, I was like feeling pretty sick in the, yeah. the race. So I think that made it harder also to recover because I, I ate so little during the race. And then it's like, I mean, it's fine when you're running, you can run on fat burning, but also the recovery goes kind of slow afterwards mm-hmm. like when you just keep throwing up like the entire night and and stuff so so it was slow and also traveling like it was a lot of nights I didn't sleep I was counting like I don't think I slept for four nights in a row kind really? of like before after and then traveling so so it was a little bit slow like once I got home I, I started like yeah rest but um, since I came to Chamonix like I arrived here beginning of August so I've been here um, for a while like um me, Tim Tollison and David Laney have been here since beginning of August and it's been super nice. We've been uh, running a lot and I think yeah, everyone was like coming in feeling a little bit like unsure and then it just gone better and better. So yeah. so then I, I actually started to feel like that running was fun again. I started to feel good and uh, much better shape and I, I started to feel fresh, kind of a freshness I didn't feel like mm. earlier in the summer. So um yeah, going into Ultra Vossan, I, I felt super excited again. So it, yeah. it was really quick turnaround from like feeling really bad <laughs> to, I was like, oh, should I just rest more? Or uh, I just felt like or I need more. Yeah, yeah, I just felt like I didn't know. It's like, oh, I'm both out of shape now after some weeks. That's like, what and, I was going to ask. Yeah, you, you and should... also like, but I also feel still fatigued. And then I got there, I was like, oh, I tried a second one. And I just <laughs> run a ton. I run so much. I don't think I ever run so much in a week. Like, <laughs> Tell us about it. Yeah, because you posted something like, I feel both tired and out of shape at the same time. And so I decided to do a short, but very big training block. Can you give any details about that training block? Yeah, I think I came here and the first run here was so bad. I was running with Emily and Petter a run and I just got dropped and I was, uh, I just felt terrible. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, but maybe I actually either, if I'm going to do these races, I have to try. It's not like I can just rest more. It mm-hmm. won't really help. So uh, then I threw in, I think one week, it was like 235K and 14,000 meters oh or something. Gosh. And then I started to feel really good. <laughs> the last run was like in that block before I started rest before Ultra Vasan. I think I ran with um, yeah. when, uh, Tim and David over from Cormayeur. And then I was like, oh, now I don't feel too bad anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like... So tell us a little bit about that little training camp that you did with Tim and David. Of course, they're your teammates with Kraft and obviously both have performed really well here at UTMB as you have also and second place finish at CCC a few years ago. But what was the the vibe like among the teammates and how was uh, everybody's condition leading into the respective races? Yeah, we had, I think, really good weeks and really relaxed, chill. Like, I mean, none of us are really, we like... We run and then we take it yeah. easy. And, uh, Are you guys all staying together? Yeah, we stay okay, together okay. in the, the same house. So it's so been nice. Like you sometimes like, uh, yeah, going to run by myself or met up someone else or a few runs. Uh, I maybe started with them. And of course, they are running faster. And some runs, if they have an easy day, we can run together. And it's, um, um, yeah, it's been uh, nice kind of to, to be here and have a little bit more time to, to train as well because I felt a lot of, Summers when I come to Chamonix, it's always for a race. It is never much time to actually train. Right. So uh, that have been um, nice weeks yeah. doing that. 
So you've mentioned Ultravasen a couple of times. You ran a 90K in your home country of Sweden what, two weekends ago now, so probably about 10 days ago at this point. So tell us a little bit about that race. I know there was some you know, navigational mishaps that happened during the event, but yeah, tell us about the Ultravasa 90K getting lost and uh, how it set you up for your CCC this weekend. Yeah, it was the fourth time I was running it, but it was quite, uh, I think 2018 was the last time. So it was really nice to be back again uh, and do it. Uh, but they change the course a little bit in the beginning. So now it's like 2K longer and also a bit more um, more trail in the beginning and more uphill to follow the, um, the cross-country skiing race uh, uh, more exactly that course. Uh, so everyone was a little bit new in the beginning. And uh, I think... I, I think it was actually an organizational mistake with like mm. to, to just put an arrow or like a kind of some kind of stop because we're coming down a gravel road and everyone missed that we were supposed to turn really uh, sharp up mm. in the forest and it was hard to see like 5.30 in the morning when it was uh, nothing to, to show that. Mm. So I was just following the lead men and um, we were running for a long time actually on that uh, dart road because it was like it was nothing else after that to, to really and then uh, I just see them after a turn that everyone is coming back and we re realized we're wrong and it's just me and 13 of the men and I was like okay none of the other women took the wrong turn and now I'm like adding a 4k and like over 15 minutes here and that's it was already after like you know 5k into the race and I already destroyed the race because <laughs> It's such a fast race and it shouldn't be possible to, it's a lot with like over 15 minutes to, yeah. to catch up. It's like you have to run almost like two minutes faster per 10K. Uh, so I was kind of like, oh, uh, and I had traveled out to Sweden. And also, um, even though I'm doing CCC, of course, it's not optimal with Ultravasan. So that yeah. was my um, priority to do really well there. And uh, then I will do my best for CCC as well. But also when I had done that uh, choice and then I just messed up after that uh, yeah. short of time and um but I mean we we it was just to try to 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 yeah I felt good and it felt stupid to drop out as yeah. well when I was like I really enjoyed running and I felt good and I wasn't injured so I just kept running and then when I started to hear I was catching and it's like oh maybe it's possible and then you get a little bit Closer and closer and feels like, okay, maybe I can make it. And, yeah. and then it's just to keep running. So you eventually did win and you ran probably about the same time that you did in 2018. I think the last time that you did it without the 15 minute detour. Like, did you feel really? Yeah, I think almost like when I ran best. Uh, 2017 because with the core change I think you add 15 yeah. minutes and then another 15 so I think like maybe a half, half an hour like okay. for the original uh -huh. um, so um, yeah I think it was a good race actually good it was like yeah booster. so tell the listeners about the Vasa a little bit because I think that's one of the things that makes Ultra Vasen really interesting is that it's sort of the summertime sister race to a very famous cross country ski race in Sweden could you just Tell people a little bit about the Vasalopit because I don't think a lot of our listeners will, will know about it. Yeah, it's a cross-country skiing race. It's 90K and it's like a A to B race. And I've been going on for a long time. And even though it's like in Sweden, most people actually live uh, in the south and we don't have great winters, uh, not anymore at least. So it's yeah. like most people can, can't train that much on uh. skis, but it's still something I think in the uh, Swedish soul that uh, cross-country skiing is something you're supposed to do, especially this race. Yeah. And it's, uh, I think everyone who's a little bit into any uh, kind of training have done it uh, in Sweden. Uh, so... I mean, you have people, maybe they have to train on like um, uh, the roller skis or they barely train at all and then uh, they do this race. But it's um, it's a big deal to do it. And um, uh, every year, like people do it. And uh, we also have the challenge to do the, the ski race. And then we have a big bike race right. and a cross-country running race uh, and swimming. So that's also a classic that people are doing all four of those in one year. And um, also a big deal to do that. Yeah, so cool. 
<laughs> yeah, I, it's been a minute since I've like looked at the Wikipedia page, but I would think it's like 15,000 people do the ski race every year and uh, for the Vassalopet and it's been around for more than a hundred years. So it's something that has a lot of history and tradition and that's really important to Swedish sporting culture. So for our listeners, it's just one of those like totally obscure sporting events that most Americans probably have never heard of, but is really important in, in your part of the world. So last time you did uh, CCC, I think it was in 2018, right? Where you were third place. You had also done Ultravasen that year as well. Do you feel like the two races are complementary, or do you feel like it's difficult to do the back-to-back and 90K and 100K only separated by three weeks? Two weeks, two yeah. Weeks. I mean, I, I skipped Sears and all before now, like I did 2018. So, <laughs> like free free yeah. races in three weeks. <laughs> no, but um, I feel, of course, it's not optimal if you would really want to run your fastest um, CCC. Uh, I don't think I think it's it's too close. But also a hundred k, I feel when you're in good shape and you can recover well. Um, so now I feel like I still have the legs, and uh, I mean I will. I guess I will uh, see if I still have the legs when I'm coming to Champé or Trient on, on Friday. But it feels like um, uh, recovery has gone well, and um, I think it's it's possible as well because it's more you don't train too much in between uh, two weeks. Uh, you can recover. I mean, if you see people recovering like a hundred miles <laughs> that quickly, yeah. so why did uh, you decide to do CCC again instead of like OCC or UTMB or TDS? Um, I think yeah, I, I liked the CCC and and then also a bit like last year when I had to drop out. Uh, I didn't really like that, and right. um, I felt like OCC. It's it's so quick. Like usually I do some marathons each year, but this year I haven't really gone into the shorter mm. racing at all. Um, so CCC fitted me better, and UTMB I felt um, no, not like. I think that's the de- decision you have to do in advance that, yeah. okay, Western State and Newton will, will be my only two races. Mm-hmm. And now I prefer to do like uh, more races, I think, and a little bit shorter. And, um, and You've still done a lot of racing this year. This yeah, I've done. So that was, I yeah. felt like, okay, no, it's uh, not, I mean, I will, yeah, I think uh, 100 miles is enough for the yeah. first year, first time I try it. Yeah, so, so this will be your fifth race over 90K this season between yes. Black Canyon, Canyons, Western States, Ultra Boston now. CCC. So talking about your training a little bit, obviously the CCC course is very different from the Western States course. So just give us a sense of how you transition from the super runnable type training to getting ready for a much more mountainous course. Yeah, since I came here, I've been, uh, I mean, more using poles, hiking up. And also um, when I got back in Norway, like starting to to do steeper and hike uh, because I haven't done that at all this year. But still, I feel like um, my flat and downhill shape is better than it usually is. But I feel like I'm lacking a little bit in the uphill shape. And that was also why I felt like, okay, I want to do Ultra Vasan with this kind of training. I preferred uh, prepared for Western State. And CCC, I felt like, yeah, it could go well. But I also feel like I'm lacking a little bit of that uh, mountain uh, fitness. Um, but also, it's a lot of flat there and like really runnable downhills and that I feel really prepared for. Uh, I still feel like my legs are are good uh, for that Mm -hmm. Uh, since Western State. That's kind of the downhill training I did a lot and it's uh, maybe a few a little bit steeper technical I guess like just the last downhill actually on uh, CCC but otherwise it's a lot of those where you just have to go kind of fast downhill. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of stretches where you can use the leg speed that you cultivated earlier in this year on the mm-hmm. CCC course, especially from the top of the Grand Col Foray, you'll be running quickly downhill. Ida, it's great to have you here and appreciate you coming into the studio. I've been closing these interviews with a uniform question for everybody. And that is just who is going to be crewing for you on Friday? Why did you choose that person and what have they meant to you throughout your career? Uh, Mimi will be crewing oh. and of course I wish she was not crewing and running instead <laughs> but uh, when Mimi she's not Koka, running yeah. it will feel uh, yeah I will feel really secure and it will be really nice to have her there so, yeah, yeah yeah awesome Mimi Coco great champion of the sport gonna be yeah. crewing for Ida it's gonna be a powerful duo there out on the CCC mm. course well good luck to you this weekend we'll be cheering for you and thanks for coming in thank you so much thanks, thanks.